So I want you to start whenever. What are, what are you? I'm so sweaty. <laughs> you are. <laughs> oh, gross. I get anxious. Oh my gosh. You're damp. Uh, primary hyperhidrosis most commonly refers to excessive sweating uh, of the hands uh, or underarms. Can you imagine a group of guys sitting around being like, can you believe George bought those silly shoes? Like, seriously. <laughs> Like, I can't. I, I, I had no idea you could milk a cat. Oh, yeah, you can milk anything with nipples. <laughs> I got nipples, Greg. Can you milk me? <laughs> I had a little issues with my dad growing up. Um, I always felt that I was not good enough. You want it track, oh, they must have just been really slow. Like, just constantly beat down. So now that I'm older, I still have that in the back of my brain sometimes. Okay, mom, all right, so I'm on the phone with her. And I say a little prayer in my head. Can you please give me a sign that my daughter's okay? And I kid you not, I hear this boom, and I look up and there's this hummingbird like right by my face. She's like, hey, what you doing? Just like right here. It's made me realize life can change in a second. Um, things that you hope for and dream for, you can't always have. Um, Cause everything was okay leading up to it. And then that was just very detrimental. All right, you ready, girl? Yes. Yes. Welcome to the Barbells and Bourbon podcast, the podcast that allows real people to tell real stories. I am your big, bald, bearded, barbell lifting, bourbon drinking, son of a bitch, Sean. And joining me today is <laughs> Brittany Riley. Hello. 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 Welcome to our home, Brittany. Hi. Thanks for having me. It's an honor. Um, I've been looking forward to our conversation. Mm -hmm. I know very little about you. You're my 23rd guest, okay. and of those 23 guests, I'd say you're probably like top three of I don't know really much Anything. at all. <laughs> I know you're a mother. I know you're a wife. I know you're a bodybuilder. I know you're a tough mutter. And there's other things, that little nuggets that you dropped on me mm -hmm. in our pre-podcast little talk yeah. that we're going to get into, but... Okay. That's why you're here today. Yeah. I want to learn about you. I want the audience to learn about you. I want to give you the opportunity to talk about whatever you want to talk about. Whether it's advocate for something, get something off your chest, help somebody that might be dealing with something that you've gone through. Yeah. That's why you're sitting here. So thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. I was excited whenever you asked me. I was like, this is going to be great. But first, where are you from, Brittany? I'm originally from Brunswick, Georgia. Didn't know that. <laughs> Um, my dad was in the Navy. Um, we're both from, or I'm sorry, my mom and dad are originally from up here in Charleroi, but um, lived down in Georgia. I was born there and then moved back up probably when I was about four, moved back up to um, Pennsylvania. Do you remember anything about it? No. No. Just pictures, but I have, I did live back down in Georgia for a little bit and I did go visit where we used to be, but I mean, I don't remember anything. I was too little. You don't have a family down there anymore? No. No. My mom and dad moved back up here. Okay. So my whole family's up here. And then like my uncle's out in Michigan and my other aunt is in Boston. That's about it. So you're all spread out? Yeah. Yeah. Um, where are you at now? I'm in Greensburg. So so, so that's that's east of here, away. about yeah. 30 minutes mm -hmm. away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you drove 30 minutes. You got to be thirsty, Brittany. And I know that you're not going to drink alcohol because you're on prep. Yes. You got a show come no up in stuff. eight? Six weeks. Six. Yes. Today marks six go? weeks. I know. I'm getting anxious. It's crunch time now. A good time. Yeah. So, yeah. I yeah. mean, when you're on prep, there's zero wiggle room for anything that's off plan. Yeah. Aubrey's your coach. Yep. She's doing your nutrition and stuff? Yeah. Nutrition. Okay. We were doing workouts together, posing, um, a little bit of everything. So. so Aubrey, she's going to be a good girl. She's not drinking on this episode, so. Saving that for later. <laughs> <laughs> we have proof. Celebration. Okay, yeah, we'll celebrate. yeah, there you go. Yeah. We'll have you back for round two, and then we can actually <laughs> celebrate. And get one of these, yeah. With, with the goodies. But for the ones who don't want to drink, or choose not to drink, can't drink, I have some Project One supplements. If you want to enjoy some of those, I have electrolytes over by you, some collagen, amino evolution, which is your... BCAAs, EAAs, mm -hmm. and I have some pre-workouts if you want to sweat and get all tingly during well, this podcast. I have heart problems. Let's not do Let's that. Not, no, <laughs> we do not want to have to call paramedics during this podcast. No CPR, no passing that, out. No, yeah. That would be a that would be a good story though. <laughs> so how'd you how'd you uh, die today? Well, you see, I, I took a drink. 
Yeah, that's something I don't <laughs> want to be branded with. So what do you want? You want some electrolytes? Yeah, I'll take some electrolytes. Okay. Why, Why don't you pull those down? Yeah. Um, go ahead and add a little bit of water to your... Okay. Yeah, I'm slightly open in there. So we're drinking electrolytes out of a cocktail glass. It's beautiful, though. <laughs> I hope that's, I hope that's okay. That's classy. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, we're classy up in here. Classy AF. So this right. is the berry flavor. Yeah, that looked like it would they be good. They smell good. They taste great. What brand is that? Project One Nutrition. Oh, that's what you said. Okay, I'm trying to look at it. Code BTC10 for 10% off. <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> No shame here. Oh, it smells delicious. Doesn't it? Yeah. Wait till you taste it. That smells real good. I love that you had the mixer there. <laughs> yeah, we're going to froth you up here. A little frothy. So electrolytes are great pre-workout, post-workout, um, after cutting the grass, anytime you need to hydrate, refuel yourself with the essential That's minerals that you need, magnesium, sodium, all that good stuff. All the goodies. And this is prep friendly. Yes. <laughs> I'll Which is going against priority anything. here for you. Mm -hmm. I'm right, not Brittany. much of a drinker, anyways, but I would have I would have taken a shot with you. I sip. appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to our home. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that is good. What's what fruit do you taste first? I don't know. I get a raspberry right off the cuff. I honestly don't know. I also just mouthwash before I came in, so it like, tastes weird. I don't even want to know what that tastes like to you, then. <laughs> no, it's sweet. I don't know. That's I'm like orange juice guessing. after toothpaste. Oh, that's the worst. That, that should, is the worst. That should be a supplement flavor. <laughs> uh, yeah. For the, for the I would try it just to try. And then, no. They used to make toothpaste that was orange flavored. Colgate, years ago. Oh, my gosh, There was yes. three different. Do you remember that? It was orange, vanilla, and there was another one. And I remember trying it. It tastes like orange juice. And I was like, oh, I can actually drink my orange juice. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> All right, Brittany. All right. You're sitting here today, the woman you are, because of, you know, your childhood, your past, mm -hmm. influences, things you've gone through. Yeah. We're all created from those experiences, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where I start these discussions is back to your childhood. Because, you know, that's where a foundation is built. So if you wouldn't mind. Okay. Take me back to your childhood, um, how you grew up, where you grew up, how school was for you, all those good things. Okay. Well, um, like, you know, a little bit about me living down in Georgia. Couldn't tell you much about that. Um, moved back up, lived in Charleroi for a while um, with my dad and my stepmom. Um, my mom lived in, like, New Stanton area. Um, I would see her on the weekends and during the week. And school for me was it was okay. I, I struggled a little bit in third grade. Didn't really like my teacher. Yeah. But other than that, I, I liked, I loved science. Um, horrible at math. But I loved, science was my thing, biology especially. Um, but by like senior year, I really got out of, I became somebody else. Like I got out of my shell. I started doing track. I, I really strived to get good grades. Like I really wanted to do well. Um, and that's whenever I started making more friends, I became more outgoing and I don't know, it was, it was a lot of fun my senior year for me. Um, but, uh, out of school, um, I had a little issues with my dad growing up. Um, I always felt that I was not good enough. Um, told that, you know, you take a test, you get an A, you get an A, you cheated. Um, oh, wow. you did, you, you won it track. Oh, they must've just been really slow, like just constantly beat down. So now that I'm older, I still have that in the back of my brain sometimes, but that you're not good enough. Yes. And that's Albury helps me a lot with that because she, I, it, she believes in me and a lot of people do, and I just have to expect it, accept it, but I don't want to, <laughs> because I feel like it's my dad telling me that. I don't know. But, um, let, yeah, me, let me I'm ask you about like, that yeah. real quick, not yeah. to interrupt you. No, but you're okay. Do you have I, any siblings? I do not. I am the only kid. Where do you think that expectation of him came from? His dad. Okay. Um, I think um, I, I was close to my grandfather, weirdly, because I didn't know the past between my dad and him. I wasn't very good. Um, but I think it was just, unfortunately, generational. And I vowed to myself not to do that to my kids. So, um, but my mom and I were really close. I mean, my dad and I were close until I, I started to get older and I started questioning things. Um, 
But it's just like, yeah, that that's built me. That's been a huge thing for me in growing up and changing as a person um, that I actually am capable. I am, I am a good person. I deserve good things, um, just stuff like that. And now that I'm older and I have my, my kiddos, I see how like excited they get and how supportive I want to be and how I felt if something happened like, Hey, you got an A heck. Yeah, man. Yeah. Good job. You did like, you worked really hard for that. And I don't want them to ever feel like I'm not proud of them. Cause that's sometimes how I felt from my dad, which it sucks, but I'm older now and I'm, I'm over it. So it's okay. I'm getting better at it. Isn't it crazy how some words of affection, how Change much, everything. Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I kind of, I don't want to say I feed off of that, but I, I want to hear that I did a good job, even as a 45 year old man, mm -hmm. you know, I want to make sure that I'm doing what others, I don't want to say expect of me, but I want to make people proud. I want exactly. to make people happy. Yep. And I want to be told that I'm doing that. Yeah. So to not hear that from your father, I can That's imagine tough. it's very tough. Yeah. Um, how's your relationship with him today? I actually don't talk to him. So, um, um. I don't want to sound as negative because that's what I try to avoid in life. <laughs> but um, very emotionally, verbally abusive. Um, when I was 18, became physical. Um, and then I've tried to be the bigger person, reach out throughout the years like, hey, good job. I see you got a big buck when you went hunting or, hey, I heard you got married or, you know, and still never really got anything back. And I was like, you know, I just got to cut ties. Um, he was also very racist and I'm not a racist person. Mm -hmm. Can't deal with that either. Um, my daughter was mixed so <laughs> so long story short I, i've been really trying to um surround myself with better people whether it's family or not and recently he had a heart my dad had a, a heart issue i believe and my uncle reached out to me and i reached out to him and i was like if i don't what god forbid something happens to my dad what if i don't reach out to him and uh, my mom even said that she's like just just say something she's like you know just make peace with that i said okay reach out to him and he wasn't very happy with my uncle for reaching out and telling me that he had a heart issue. But at the same time, I'm like, listen, like you're my dad. I hope everything goes well. You know, I pray that, that you're okay. And that's the last time I talked to him in probably like the last year. Wow. So, so how many years has it been since you've actually like, since I physically like have seen him yeah. or hung out when my grandma passed about 10 years ago. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it's been to me, time. it was like eight and I'm like, wait, my daughter would be 11. So yeah, about 10 years ago. Yeah. Have you sort of just accepted that, you're not going to have a relationship with your dad anymore? Or do you, in the back of your mind, still hope that you re rekindle things? No, I don't want to rekindle things just because I've been through so much. And this sounds horrible. I guess I'm like a horrible person to say it. But, but I also don't want my children around it. I know what psychologically messed me up. And the fact that he reached out to my kiddos kind of upset me. And I'm like, we are purposely not around you for a reason. But if my kids want to meet you when they're older, that is fine. I want them to make their own opinion of you because they deserve to have their grandparents right mm -hmm. they deserve to have family but yeah so i mean i i in one aspect i do i wish there was something more of just like hey like in passing being civil but i can't i i can't it just there's so much and then every time i do something well he finds out about it oh you did this you had a you had a sugar daddy by your car oh yes had a sugar daddy you're right <laughs> i mean so. from what i'm hearing over the last yeah. Ten, 10 minutes it sounds like it's probably for the best yeah so and my mom and i like i said we're we're really close so i'm very thankful that my mom and i are close i can share literally anything with her um and my boys know that and my boys know that they can go to her for anything so i mean that's a very good thing she's always been like my constant and my grandma she was my, my dad's mom we were besties like she was my best friend i would go over her house all the time and mm -hmm. so i had very supportive family thankfully do your yeah. mom and dad still talk no I think the last time my mom's talked to my dad was when my pat passed away in like 2007. Wow. So that's when I graduated. So if that tells you the area of how long ago that was. Yeah. So your dad doesn't seem like he's the best. And I, I can't to... fault him because, I mean, he wasn't probably treated the best. But at yeah. the same time, you have to make that conscious effort to be a better person. Yeah. And that's what I try to do every day. Be a good person, whether you get pissy or not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. people are going to remember how you handled situations yes. and how you affected them. And mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I try to be very conscious of that as well. I used to not be that way. I used to be very negative, like mm -hmm. a very negative. I was an a-hole. Like you wouldn't want to be like, if you met me from 19 to about like 25, you'd be like, you're a horrible human being. I do not want to be around you. Really? Yes. And that's part of my growing up. And I like step back and realize that 
you can't be living like that. <laughs> Do you think that that was sort of ingrained from your dad's yeah. relationship? For the, uh, yeah, and um, you were kind of like I was always around negativity, and I I was I was a scrapper, I was a fighter, um, but I also I wasn't I wouldn't say I was cocky, but I would run my mouth, <laughs> um. And that wasn't right. Like I, I saw them do that. Like I, I say them as in like my cousins would do it. And I was like one of the girls, all the other ones were guys. Like, so I would see them run their mouth. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then just negative stuff all the time. And I just, it, I didn't even realize I was doing it until someone called me out and I was like, oh my God, I can't be doing this. This isn't right. <laughs> so <laughs> you when know? you got called out, did you, did you get defensive? Like, oh, I'm not, or did. I did. Yeah. I did. Cause it's a natural human reaction. Yeah. Right. But it hit me like, hey, Britt, like you need to take a step back. Obviously, there, there, you need to change something. It's not these people. That's something that has to deal with you. And it sucked. It, it, mm. it hit you in the gut, you know. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, I, this is how you grow. This is how you learn. You don't know there's a problem unless someone brings it up. And since like 2013, like before, right before I lost my daughter, I, I was going to counseling, and it helped me a lot because I'm like, oh, this is like you said, reactions. Oh, this is how I reacted to things. Well, mm. crap, I didn't know that was how I was doing that. That makes sense why other things aren't working because I'm being negative. And huge turnaround around like 2013, 2014 for me. Who called you out? I honestly don't even remember. I just remember them saying that like, you can't be that way. I, I think it was somebody I was work. It was one of my, um, my fellow employees I was working with. I just remember like we were in a tiff and she goes, you just because you're angry all the time, you know, you can't, you can't be like that to me. And I'm just like, Wow. Like yeah. it hit me. <laughs> I was like, oh, so I'm thankful for her. Yeah. Because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have, um, you know, took a step back. That's why myself. I wanted to ask you if you remember too, because I want you to be thankful for that yeah. person because she might have single handedly changed the whole course of, the course of your future. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. It's crazy how that can, can happen. One single Why people thing. are put in your life for a reason. Mm -hmm. So thank you, whoever that yeah. person is. <laughs> um, so did you go to college? I did not. Okay. I did not. I wanted to, and then I ended up getting pregnant with my bullies. But my dream job would be occupational therapist. I would love to go back and do that. I, I would love to work at a VA and help help out the veterans. Like, dream job. <laughs> do, you, do you plan on trying to do that? I would. Actually, my husband and I have been talking about that. I yeah. would like to go back to school for sure. Only thing, like I said, my math, a little help there. But he's an engineer, so he can help me with that. <laughs> yes. Engineers are typically yeah. pretty good with math. Yeah. <laughs> so... But yeah, yeah you should do that. School. I mean, yeah. it's never too late. Oh, how, no. how old are you? I'm 30. I just turned 35. Okay. So plenty of time. Exactly. It's now a doctorate though. It kind of stinks, but it's fine. I could do it. It's all right. So yeah, how, how much schooling would that take? It'd be like six, seven years. Oh, it was wow. originally like four, but I was thinking that I can even just be like an assistant and then work my way while I already have my foot in the door, work my way up. And that'd be really cool. I already work in the medical field, so yeah, I like it. Just fit right in. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> So you mentioned you did track. So you were an athlete. A sprinter. Ooh, okay. I loved it. I yeah. love track. <laughs> what did sports do for you as a kid? Did it, was it a nice escape? Was it, were you like competitive? Why did you get into sports? <laughs> I always like, I, I've always liked to be active. I was the kid that ran around barefoot, running in the field, screaming my head off, just having fun, having to be called in to my grandma's house. Like, hey, shut up. <laughs> you need to get in the house. Time for dinner. <laughs> like, I was always running around. Um, unfortunately, again, control issues. Uh, my dad wouldn't let me do any sports until my senior year. That's why everything changed, I think, mm -hmm. my senior year. Um, I did track, and I, it was an escape, but it was also like, wow, there goes all my energy because I'm very energetic. And I'm like, I need to channel it somewhere. Yeah. And I remember the coach saying, where were you past few years? We could have used you. We could have used you on the team. Yeah. Because um, my friend actually making a joke, she uh, real fast. And she's like, you're the fastest white chick. And I was like, I'll take second to you any day. Like, it's fine. <laughs> but we would do the um, the four by four, the four by one, 100 meter and 200 meter dash was my my events that I did. And we went undefeated until we went against Waynesburg. I loved yeah. it. It was an escape, but it also gave me something to do and put my energy towards yeah. Okay. Well, your athleticism continued into your adult years. Um, yeah. I know you're into bodybuilding now, mm -hmm. and we have a cup hey. sitting here on the table, Tough Mudder. Yeah. Where was that at? Everywhere. <laughs> so so you, you travel around doing these? Yeah. Yeah. Um, How many have you so, done? Oh, my God. I've done it like probably 25. Tough Mudders. So that's not even caught, including Spartan, terrain Damn. race, and other obstacle course races. 
But uh, that's after I lost my daughter. I came up and I was like, I'm going to do obstacle course race. And I don't know if you've ever heard of Mud on the Mountain. Mm -hmm. They don't have it anymore. Yeah, Yeah. it's Seven Springs. Very first race besides ever in, you know, high school racing. Very first race. It's seven miles or was seven miles and like 30 obstacles, I think, on the ski slopes. Um, And that started it all. (laughs) Started everything for me. And then last year, no, year and a half ago is when I kind of started getting into bodybuilding because I'm like, body needs a break. Less expensive. Lies. Totally the opposite. <laughs> not for females. No, not for girls. It's our nope. bathing suits and our hair. Well, I do my own hair and makeup, so I don't worry about that. Hair, makeup, tanning suits. Yeah, and tanning and, and the heels fees, and registration. Heels. Oh my gosh. Hey, but yeah, this, so I've done 18, 19, 21. 20. I've done at least four or five, or no, four um, World's Toughest, which is the 24-hour ones. Um, I actually met my husband at one of the obstacle course races. Um, that was a Spartan race we met at, and we actually got married at World's Toughest Mudder. So it's like really ingrained into our life, and it's Dang. a huge thing for us. Do you have any yeah. Toughest Mudder tattoos? Actually, I do. Do you? I do. It's on the back of my leg. <laughs> well, that's good. You should, I mean, hearing how passionate you are about it, yeah. I'm not surprised. I'm, so I'm, I'm the person that was like, I will never get a brand on me, like Nike or you know Adidas or something like that. And I'm like, I got World's Toughest Mudder on my back of my calf. But the reason why I got it is in 2021, my goal was to get 50 miles. Like once you get 50 miles, you get a new bib to wear, which I couldn't find one where I brought it. You get a new bib. So you have a white one with your number on it and you write on the back. And then once you hit 50, you get like this brownish colored one. Once you get 75, you get silver. And once you get 100 miles, you get gold. So I wanted the bib. I wanted the, the, the brown bib. And I, I ended up getting it. And I was like, I'm getting myself tattooed. I got my 50 miles. I hit my goal. And it's bright orange and black just like this. And Good for you. And then we ended up getting married that Monday. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Where was that one at? That was right outside of Vegas. So it was like, it was per- we actually weren't supposed to get married at Tough Mudder. We already were going to Vegas to get married, to get eloped. Oh. And the CEO found out because I gave him a little goodie bag. It was a shot of Fireball, a rubber duck, and a picture of us at a finish line. And they said, let's get married. He's like, oh, you can get married here. I'm like, excuse me? Dan's like, hell yeah. <laughs> Was, like, it, was it a big spectacle? Uh, huge. Really? I was like, uh, uh, um, no. And I'm a very social person. I'm like, I don't want to do that. I already paid like to go do it at, at Vegas. And so um, there's this thing called brunch afterwards. So after the event, the pit crew, which helps people, the racers and then our race racers, we go have just big brunch and they give awards out. They give out, um, they give out other like, it's called like the family awards, which was like Tough Mudder family. Like this person did really awesome. They get this. Well, I was already dressed up because I knew we were getting actually married mm-hmm. and everybody's like, what's going on? And I had my brown bib on. I was so proud of it. And they played bagpipes for us. We walked out to bagpipes. Um, they got me a bouquet. They made me a cake. They had a little veil with a tough mutter thing on it. All kinds of stuff. All from Friday to Monday. They, they planned this. That's awesome though. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Do you tell me you have pictures or videos of that. Oh yeah, I do. And the guy that walked me down is like the hype man. His name's Sean. And he walked me down and... Remember how we were talking about racism? Mm-hmm. He is a black, lovely gentleman. And he asked me, oh, can I walk you down the aisle? And I said, absolutely. You're like the mother dad, right? And he goes, no, I can't have your dad. I can't do that. I'm not your dad. And I'm like, <laughs> you, you are. I said, you are. You are a tough mother dad. And my dad's very racist. I can't think of a better way to, <laughs> to have. That is yeah, super the person walk me down. Yeah. And he gets, every, he is so motivational and he gets everybody hyped up and it could it couldn't be any more of a tough mutter thing. Like that was the most. And the bagpiper, his name's John. He would go out and play at sun like as the sun was going down, and then when the sun comes up, he plays. So like it was just everything was wow. perfect. And this all came together within like what two three days. What year was that? That was twenty twenty one. So not that long ago. No. no. Wow. I'm gonna overlay some pictures yeah. and or video. I can send you stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah no problem. Um, because I want to show the audience that I want to see it too. Yeah. So other than that toughest mutter, mm-hmm. what's the most memorable one that you've done? Um, most memorable, well, the one where I got third in age group where I got this medal would have been the next year. <laughs> it was freezing. Um, and I thankfully had all my gear and my pit crew was like, you know, you still have like three hours left. I'm like, I could walk this lap and get it. So, but my, I would say my most memorable is the one that I did not finish. And the one that really pushed me to want to do more. Um, 2018, it was like 27 degrees. They were in Georgia. It was warmer in Georgia than it was here. It was 40 up here. And 
where they filmed Black Panther fight scene is where we were at. Our wetsuits were frozen. People were falling out from ice, like on the obstacles. Um, hypothermia. I was pretty hypothermic, and I did not finish. I only got three laps. Wow. And I was like, I never want to go through that cold ever again. So that in my brain, I was like, okay, I could do this. And that's really what pushed me to do better. That's and, interesting that you chose the one that you didn't finish yeah. as the most memorable. Yeah. That says a lot about you though. Yeah. So it was like overcoming things and. Before we even got there, my tent, we set up tents like the night before. I already knew it was going to be crap. <laughs> my tent flew into a lake. All my shit was everywhere. <laughs> oh I was like, is this really, is this really how this is going to start? My pit crew's like rushing. And I'm like, I don't even want to do this anymore. I was already not mentally there. And then that happens. And I'm like, my knee, I couldn't move my knee. I wasn't staying warm enough. I wasn't moving fast enough to stay warm. People were literally falling off and like cracking their heads off of things. Um, so I just, I came back and I supported my fellow racers that were next to me. And I'm bawling, just bawling my eyes out. Like, I can't believe I didn't finish this, but I'm like, you weren't supposed to. You weren't right. supposed to do that. You were supposed to be here to help your friends finish. You're supposed to be here to cheer them on. You're supposed to, you know, drive them home, make sure they're okay. And it, it, I ended up being happy that my friend, I could help her. Mm -hmm. So it ended up working out. So that's not a team event. That's an individual event. Correct? Yeah, ma majority of it. You can have a team if you want, but I, yeah, I've run only individual. So that event that you didn't finish, is there a point where the organizers of that event say, you know what, this is too dangerous to continue? They actually did stop some of the obstacles. Like they'd let you go around them. Um, but I, if I'm correct, um, I think a New Jersey event was even colder. And that was like back in like 2013, 14. I don't know. I never did that one. I didn't even know about it. Um, but they said there was like horrible windstorm at one. The ice at the other one, the New Jersey said it was, it was freezing. So, I mean, I don't think they would actually ever shut it down, but they'll shut down obstacles and things like that because yeah, you have to take safety into consideration at some oh, yeah. point well right? you sign a death waiver so <laughs> serious <laughs> we call it a death waiver but yeah it literally you sign your life away on this waiver like hey you, you, if you die out here it's not our fault <laughs> <laughs> wow yeah yeah and the spartan ones i've done an ultra which was up on the ski and i've done it, it was like over 33 miles 60 obstacles never want to do it again ever in my life my husband just did another one i'm like you're nuts i broke me never want to do it again ever so Ever. no more Spartans. I will do Spartans, but not an ultra. That's like oh, the 30 okay. some miles. I do, mm, yeah, that's, yep. I, my body was like, I hate you. Don't you ever do this to me ever again. <laughs> and then I ended up doing the 24 hour in placing. <laughs> so <laughs> in retrospect. So yeah. how do you train for these? Um, other than I, I know there's a lot of mental strength that it yeah. takes, but yes. how do you, how do you physically train well, for a toughest mother or a Spartan? So, um, a lot of upper body, working out with a lot of upper body stuff, um, body mechanics of like on the rings or monkey bars and stuff, going out, getting wet and running uncomfortably, um, just different things. Like if it's really hot, like today you go out there, you sweat and you know, you just put in the work. Um, I know for worlds we do usually wear wetsuits cause it does get cold and windy. So Dan and I will, we have a Creek now we'll dive in the Creek and we'll go run up Seton Hill and back. Um, We'll just, you, you try to replicate what you would see at the race. Okay. Um, the best you can. Yeah. And then we do long runs at like Duff Park and stuff like that. So it helps I, us. I guess cardio is probably a huge factor, yeah. right? Yeah. Because this is, this is timed, right? Yeah. So this one does tw 25 hours, but um, there's ones from like 5K and then there's a 15K, which is like the normal Tough Mudders. You can take as long as you want. It's like six hours, I think max or something. Um, then we have the, the infinity, which is an eight hour event. We have the toughest, which is a 12 hour event. And then worlds is 24, um, Spartan, I, the ultra, I think, I think you get like 15 hours. Um, I can't remember. I know they change it every year, but if you do a regular event, again, it's like six, eight hours. You could do walk, walk it, whatever. But yeah, the bigger ones, they are timed. You have to hit time hacks. You have to make it or they, they cut you off and you're done. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. So when's the next one you're going to do? Do you already have it Actually, planned? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we plan this like a year in advance okay. because we want to know like, you know, hotels and stuff. So August, after I do my show in June, um, I'm going to go back to obstacle course racing for a little bit. <laughs> um, hopefully a little bit stronger. I'm going to do one, um, doing the 12-hour event in Chicago, then going to do the eight-hour event in Pittsburgh, and then just a regular one with, with family that Sunday. And then we'll do the 24 hour one in November. And this time it'll be in Florida this year. Oh. They change it every year. Okay. 
So Well, that should be nice in November in Florida. You would think. When I won this, it was, yeah, it was really cold. And it was Alabama, Florida line. And it was like 33 degrees and windy in that area. So, and there was like really bad storms coming through too. (laughs) Every year we get jinx when they move it. Every year. Just when you think it's going to get a little better. Oh, it's 80 degrees. It's five. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) Um, The way we kind of, the way I knew of you was Mm -hmm. you won your OCB figure pro card last year Mm -hmm. in at the Pittsburgh show. Yeah. That's when I realized who you were. Yeah. The thing I remember most about that show was your son in the audience. <laughs> Screaming. Saying, go mom. Yeah, yeah mom. <laughs> it was so cute. And your stage presence was also something that I remember. You owned that stage. I like know. blacked out when I was up yeah, there. Well, right? <laughs> yeah, you don't realize what's going on around <laughs> yeah. you. but Just don't look at anybody. Don't look at anybody. <laughs> was that your first show? Yep. First it looked like it was show. your 20th, just yeah. by the way that you kind of like held yourself up there. I mean, I've been on stage before, but not that. Not like that. Not like that at all. Yeah. 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 Aubrey was your coach for that? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> I actually met her through a charity event for the animals. I met her a few years beforehand. I did a charity event at the Palace Theater. And then I was like, I reached out to her. I was doing pole fitness. And then she was like, I bodybuilding. I was like, well, I'm not doing obstacle course racing anymore. And then that's how that all started. And yeah, she became my coach. Mm-hmm. So you had no interest in bodybuilding whatsoever until that? No. Well, yeah, kind of. Um, I've never really wanted to do bodybuilding, but I did like to build my body. Sure, I sure. like to work out. That is my therapy. If I don't go, I get cranky. Um, I love to lift. I've been lifting. I used to lift with my dad mm-hmm. since fifth grade. I would lift with him all the time, and I loved it. So... Once I realized, hey, I, I need a break. I'm not the type of person that can sit down. I need to do something. So I was like, all right, do you not, we're going to try this. And multiple people at my gym through the years were like, you have like a really wide back and a small waist. You should do bodybuilding. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> and then the more I thought about it, and I, I told Dan how he's been into bodybuilding. He did a show before. I was like, do you, do you think I should try that? And he's like, why not? Try it once, and if you like it, do it. Mm. And that's how that all became – a part of my life now and I love it. Now it's like you have a goal to work towards, which I need. I'm that type of person. I need to work towards something. So Well you set the bar really high being your first show and getting yeah. your pro card. Now I didn't expect that at all. My client, Julia, she yeah. did the same thing. She her debut show Yes. Won all five of her classes. <laughs> I, and walked home with her you need to master's see her. pro card. <laughs> you can see why. Yeah. So, I mean, she which is incredible looks, yeah. to, you know, win your pro card in your debut like you mm-hmm. and, and she did. But it's also sort of detrimental because, like, to excel, like, you you've need the bar's already so yeah. high, yep. you know. So it really takes a lot to get even higher because the competition gets tougher. Oh, yeah. Um, They're all pros out there <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's yeah. it's a completely different Mindset. league, right? Mm-hmm. But um, what's the show that you're doing? I'm doing the OCB Hall of Fame um, in Foxborough, Massachusetts, okay. June 29th. Um, I actually kind of got in my head the other day by looking at possible competition, which is stupid. You don't do that. Don't do that. No. But at the same time, I'm like, listen, no, you can't think that way because they're working just as hard as you are, if not harder sometimes. Also, this will be my best package. I've only done two. This will be my second show. Yeah. I'm, I'm bringing a better package than I was last year. It's only my second show. Um, my goal is just to honestly have fun. Like, I had a blast last year. I wanted to meet people. My best friend was up there with me. She did her debut. Her name is Devin. Um, it, and I just genuinely enjoyed myself last year. And that was my goal. I didn't expect to place. I didn't expect any of that. And I had fun. I made my tea walk. I did that. And Aubrey helped me tweak it and, you know, what to do. Loved it. Had a blast. But I need to remember that's what I need to do for this one, too. Even if it's pro, you can't just be so stoic and not enjoy it and make yourself sick. Yeah. Listen to the music. Dance in the back. Get your jitters out, you yeah. know. Um, so are you competing as a pro in this? Mm-hmm. Fox? Okay. Yeah, this will be my, this will be my pro, pro debut. debut. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you did mention a very important point when it comes to bodybuilding Mm -hmm. you don't know who your competition is going to be standing next to you on that stage in that moment (laughs) you can look at all the pictures you want leading up to that show but that day stress can completely wipe out your physique in a matter of 
12, 24 hours, right? Yeah. Um, maybe they're, they didn't hit their peak correctly. Maybe mm. they're too watery or maybe they're having digestive. You have no idea yep. who's going to show up next to you. So yep. as long as you know that you've given them 100% mm -hmm. and you and your coach did everything you can, what more can you ask for? Exactly. And I actually, I don't know what, I guess it's the prep brain. I got super emotional today. <laughs> I was leaving the gym and I just start cry happy crying. Like just, I'm like, I am so grateful. Yeah. We're really doing this thing. And yeah. I messaged her. I was like, hey, Obs, like, I just want to say I'm thankful for you. Thank you for believing in me. We're doing this freaking thing. Like, I'm excited. And I'm like, what is wrong with me? And I'm like, okay, you're going to have some highs and lows. This happened last time. I have to remember that. But I just, I see how much my back has grown. I see how much my legs have grown. I've seen how much like my, my shoulders have grown. And it's so neat to see how much just in a year things change and this is a this is a big show and like i i i don't know how i'm going to react when i'm there because aubrey's not gonna be there but my husband will be back with me he's gonna help me warm up and stuff and i'm just like i'm a kid in a candy store but at the same time I'm like you need to focus okay adhd brain focus <laughs> yeah. do don't look at your competition just work out and just smile and give your best go yeah. out there and just have fun and it's easier said than done sometimes yeah. oh, God, because yeah. once you get backstage you know, oh, it, it's, it's a, it's, it's a whole, it is, it's a cluster. It's a whole vibe. Yeah. Everyone's like a machine at that point mm -hmm. doing their different up. things and different pop-up techniques and eating their different secret backstage things. And yeah, but it's, it is really hard to just focus on what you need to do, Yeah, but got to keep that stress down. And yeah. And that's, that's what I'm trying to remember. Cause I, I get very anxious. Um, so I try to just, okay, turn this into a positive thing. It's, it's not anxious. It's, it's just more energy that you need to disperse. Find something positive to disperse it to. Yeah. Um, like last year, my mom, bless her soul, she's like, look at that girl. Look at that. I was like, mom, I can't look at my competition, whether they were physique or not, or her figure. But, you know, like I, the one girl, thankfully, was physique because she was jacked. But I was like, mom, I can't look at them. You're going to stress me out. I love you, but stop it. <laughs> and my grandma came and she's like crying. She's like, that that's her on stage and she's like bawling my kids you heard them yeah. and and my friends came out my friend did my hair for me and it it was so surreal and like you said it's kind of like it's like a you almost have like a downfall because now it's like well you already had your your peak of that like but now i have to look at it as you really need to put 110 percent in because you are up there with the pros mm -hmm. you really need to watch everything that goes into your mouth everything that you do is it it leads to that Oh, I'm not going to do this other rep. No, you're going to do that last rep until you can't hold that weight anymore. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's funny you mentioned, you know, your grandma pointing out the competition because yeah. I was in the um, in Baltimore at the Catonsville the Conquer Conquer with Julia it's last weekend. Show. Yeah. And it's hard not to size up the competition yeah. as a coach, especially because mm -hmm. you want your client to do well. Yes. So, you know, you're kind of sizing up the competition. I saw this one competitor. First thing I think is, I hope she's not figure. I hope she's physique. And then she's doing the figure poses. I'm like, crap. Shit. <laughs> and then you try to see what her number is. Then you go to the, the roster and you see the class. And I saw she was in the same class as yeah. Julia. I'm just like, shit. <laughs> but you know what? What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. You know, you're there though. You're already there and you're, we, we did everything we could. Mm hmm. Up until that day. Yeah. So, you know what? And that's, Screw it. that's what I'm learning. Like, we can only do, we, we control what we can control. And that is the hardest thing for me because I am a control person because I don't have a lot of that around me that I'm just like, what I can control, I over, over yeah. control. And like, I get like very picky about things. Can't do that. You could just, just calm down, breathe, come in best you can. Yeah. Yeah. Is Aubrey doing your posing? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I've been really working on that, trying to do better with my transitions, which we know all the transitions are so fun. Um, <laughs> like I, I, I have a, a crap shoulder, so sometimes getting into back pose really, really, really hurts my shoulder. Um, but I've been getting massages, which seems to help. Um, but yeah, like it's we're, we're working on that, and I feel more confident. I like the posing. I think it's fun. I think you can make it kind of your own, but also you know stay in those parameters. Right. You know? But yeah, she's helping me with posing and stuff, and it. I feel better with my posing more fluid. I look more robotic. Now I look a little more fluid and girly. Yeah. yeah. Good. I mean, that just comes with experience yeah. too. Yeah, true. The more comfortable you get with the poses and more confidence you feel in my hitting too. them and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how much posing 
di dictates how you look yeah. versus, let's say, how it can accentuate the muscle mass that you have. The or good things have. and the bad things mm -hmm. if you're not doing it properly. Yeah, we got judges feedback from Julia's show oh, last did, weekend. Oh, did you? Okay. And I'm sort of convinced that posing maybe could have helped a few of them, just getting into them a little bit differently. Oh, okay. And I mean, I'm, I'm not, who knows, well, but it, but it is crazy very, how just a different. little tweak here and a lift here and a twist here yep. can just make you look so different. Yep. You can hide things that you don't want to be seen mm -hmm. and you can accentuate the things you do want to be seen. Like mm -hmm. her back is beautiful. Yeah. Like I love like when she hits those back because I'm like, she has an amazing back. <laughs> Guess what? A very consistent comment was a great back. from four of the judges. No, not wide enough. Back wasn't wide enough. Dude, her back is like one of the best backs I've ever seen. Yeah. Lats aren't developed enough. I'm just like, oh, it's just like but I it said. It kind of like slaps you in the face because you're like, well, I don't see that, but okay. Okay. But just How when do we you do this? think yeah. like, oh, this is her strength. Yep. It's just like reality check. Yep. yep. It still needs work. Like my hammies. My hammies are probably my weakest, which sucks because I used to have strong hammies from running and from obstacle course racing. Well, I was getting really bad back pain because they were too strong and my quads weren't strong enough. So I stopped working, you know, doing my mm. deads and stuff. And now they're like, you need bigger hammies. I'm like, shit, man, I used to have amazing ones. Now I don't have them as much because they hurt my back. <laughs> so. Unfortunately, excuses don't work. Yeah, exactly. And it's just funny because people are like, all right, muscles. I'm like, they're just for the gram. They're not real. Like they're not functional by any means. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So stepping away from bodybuilding, yes. um, not really to, not to take a hard left, mm -hmm. but you mentioned losing your daughter. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah. Would you mind? So, no, I don't mind. Um, as I showed you before, that's her, her footprints. Um, she would be 11 next month. Um, but yeah, so I, uh, I had an issue with my boys when I, I was pregnant with my twins. Um, they thought I had cervical cancer. So once I had them, I actually had them very early. I had them at 24 weeks. They were only a pound and a half. Um, so I, apparently my body doesn't like being pregnant. So leading up to, they thought I had cervical cancer. So they cut out a lot of my cervix. Um, I got pregnant with my daughter um, in 2013, and I kept telling the doctor, I don't have cervix, didn't want to listen to me, didn't want to listen to me, didn't want to listen to me, went into full-on active labor at 15 weeks. Somehow they stopped it, don't remember how, um, sent me to New Jersey, had surgery to close my cervix, but I was bleeding very bad because I had a fibroid tumor, which was rubbing against the placenta. and actually ruptured her waters. I was uh, 18 weeks when my waters ruptured. At 20 weeks, I had her. Um, she was born, stillborn. Um, so like, it was just all together, just my body just wasn't happy. Things didn't line up right. Um, and yeah, and then I went back actually after, because this surgery that I had had, only two doctors did in the United States. And he was out of New Jersey and the other one was in Chicago. So, after I had had her, they had it cut, they had cut it. So I went back for a pre-pregnancy tack. It's an abdominal cerclage and in hopes of having another child, but then I ended up having a hysterectomy. And you know what? All my friends are having babies, so I could just spoil them. It's fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was, that was a mm. huge life changer too for me. How, how did it change your perspective on life moving forward? Cause you had already had your sons. by Yeah. The I had my boys. They would have been, um, they, they were four at the time, but her due date was on their fifth birthday. <laughs> okay. Like that was my, my, it was actually my hope was by the time they were five, I would have another little one. Um, but it's changed cause I became very, obviously very depressed after that had happened. Um, but now I obviously I would like to make her proud. Um, I like to have things for her in memory of her. Um, that's actually why I have a hummingbird um, tattoo. Um, I can tell you that later if you guys want to hear about that. But uh, it's made me realize life can change in a second. Um, things that you hope for and dream for, you can't always have. Because um, everything was okay leading up to it. And then that was just very detrimental. No. Changed my way of thinking like, oh my God, like you need to really, you know, Start doing things for yourself. Start doing things for your kiddos. Be be a, a better person. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. So you turned it into a positive. The yeah. Best you could. I tried actually. So when my milk came in, I actually donated breast milk to a, a mom that couldn't feed her baby, oh. and it was my way of healing. Because it's my way of giving back. I was like, okay, well, if I can't use it, at least somebody can use it. 
And thankfully, the baby ended up stuck having like a rash around his face. I actually got to meet them. They were really sweet. That's incredible. Yeah. I didn't know you could do that. I, so you can, <laughs> but like, you can send them to the banks, but they like overly filter them. So you're really not getting the nutrients. Um, I don't like take pain pills or anything. And I wasn't drinking. So I, I told her that. I was like, listen, like I will go send it through the doctor. And honestly, I just gave her milk bags that I had had and it helped her son until I couldn't pump anymore. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think that's really cool. That, you know, that is, that's that's really that's incredible. I didn't yeah. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. So you're you're like you said, you're giving back. Mm -hmm. You're still doing Helping the motherly the things. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. To be like like when a kitty you know helps a, a dog puppy you know a little puppy or something. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, it's same thing. <laughs> I got nipples, Greg. Can you milk me? <laughs> it's you immediately can milk, you what can, I thought. Of. You can milk anything with nipples. <laughs> with nipples. <laughs> about the fluffy cat i was oh like wait a God. second see adhd i told you <laughs> that was the first movie reference ever in 23 episodes i love it because <laughs> i'm so i, I live my movies. life off of like movie references yeah, dodgeball too. anchorman wedding crashers all my old kids school do. Yeah. like you name it anyways i love shrek random i'll just be like that's a nice boulder and my kids are like really really <laughs> not like gumdrop buttons like just random stuff we do it all the time. I get oh it. God. Anchorman. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that could be a whole separate episode <laughs> alone. Movie references. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. I don't even know what we're talking about now. Let, uh, let's hear about the hummingbird. Okay. So the hummingbird. Okay. Show, I don't know. Show if, this camera your hummingbird. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like a watercolor hummingbird. Mm -hmm. It used to have a little germal for its eyeball. But um, so I don't know if you believe in signs. I don't know if you believe in like, I don't, I'm a spiritual person. I'm not like a holier than thou person, but I do believe there is a higher power. I do believe that my, my daughter is up there with my grandma. I do believe in angels. I believe in signs. Um, so my mom called me. I was literally in the house probably three or four days. And she called me. She's like, hey, you need to get outside. As a kid, she would always take me outside when I was upset. Okay, mom. All right. So I'm on the phone with her. And I say a little prayer in my head. Can you please give me a sign that my daughter's okay? Doesn't have to be today, doesn't have to be tomorrow, just something. And I kid you not, I hear this boom, and I look up and there's this hummingbird like right by my face. She's like, hey, what you doing? Just like right here, bald, bald my eyes out. And like, so I have hummingbirds throughout my whole entire house. Like I have chimes of hummingbirds. I have obviously a tattoo of a hummingbird. Um, I really do believe that was her. And I also had a sign from her when we went to go pick out her urn. Down south in Georgia, they do not believe like in witchcrafty stuff, or they believe in witchcrafty stuff. They probably thought I was a witch. <laughs> I pull into the funeral home, and it feels like I just got punched in the chest. And my milk had let out, and I was like, "Oh my god! I it's been three days, four days. Why is all of a sudden my milk coming in?" Okay. Well, my very Catholic friend was with me, and my ex was there. We went to pick out her urn. The funeral guy's right here, and he's like, "Okay, we're looking." All of a sudden, the light goes off, turns back on. We're all just kind of looking at each other like, okay, look at some more urn. Boom. Lights goes off again. And my very Catholic friend's like, it's her. Just yells out. It's her. The guy gets up, shoves his chair at us and was like, I don't know what you brought with you, but I've had this light for 20 years and it has never done that. And I was like, it's my daughter. It's my daughter. Like I, I immediately knew. And then my friend went to take pictures of just her feet. That's all I wanted. I have no pictures of her. I just wanted me like holding her feet and none of them showed up on the card. It said card error. I was like, she doesn't want me to remember it that way because the pictures we took outside turned out, the pictures after turned out, and those didn't turn out. Wow. And then she ended up being 11 ounces and 11 inches long. 11-11 um, is very spiritual to me. Mm -hmm. And the fact that she was 11 ounces, 11 inches, just, I, there's so many coincidences yeah. and signs. Like when I went to pick up her urn, my check was came to, I went to Panera Bread, came to 11-11. Yeah, I so mean, I was like, yeah. I don't know if it's just me looking for signs, but I truthfully believe That's like she's like, hey, mom, I'm okay. Yeah. yeah, and my boys knew I was pregnant before I, I knew I was pregnant with her. They're, my sister bought me this. I'm like, you don't have a sister. My sister bought me. I'm like, you don't have a sister. And then they would say other stuff, and I'm like, you know, I'm gonna go take that test. <laughs> oh. That's pregnant. Yeah, there's a lot of signs there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not like. I'm not like, oh, look, there's a ghost over there or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, th that's, that's pretty compelling. Like, yeah. It's hard not to, to believe that. Mm. Um, the hummingbird thing. Hummingbirds don't go around people, do they? Let alone, I've never seen one down in Georgia. I'd lived there for a few years and yeah. I never once saw it. So I immediately went and made it some food and put it a little feeder out. I went to like Dollar General that day 
Never saw her again. Never saw it again. Never saw one hummingbird. I lived down there. That's crazy. Yeah. She was just, I mean, a foot away from my face. <sighs> yeah. So that's why I have that. And there's a little, little thing that Audie's making me for my show. So that'll be hummingbird related to say the least. I don't want to give it away, but. On your suit? Yes. Nice. Okay. Mm, well, I'm excited. We'll yeah. leave it. <laughs> um, so I, you have a lot of other tattoos mm -hmm. and I remember you have, is it angel wings on your back? I do. That was from my grandfather. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I have the boy's footprints right here. Um, and their little feet were like as big as my thumb. I have, I have all kinds of stuff. This is from my grandma and my cousin. I just got this one for my cousin. This is my memorial side. I try not to mm -hmm. add to this one. Um, I have a pinup girl. I have my kitty that was 17 when he passed. Yeah, I have all kinds. Pinup. Let's talk pinup. I I, I kind of <laughs> know what it is, but I kind of don't. Yeah. I, like the, I think the only time I ever heard that term was from you. Yeah. Um, what is it? So, um, I mean, in my own terms, it's like um, like the 1950s, 1940s, like the World War II planes, the girls, the bomber girls on the side. Um, basically, pinup girls were made for the troops. Um, made to give them morale and you know they would hang the pictures up and um, Marilyn Monroe is one of the big ones uh, Betty Page Betty Grable beautiful long legs she was a really popular one um, but yeah pinup is just it's like a very empower now it's like a very empowering thing for women curvy not curvy no curves here so <laughs> I love it but it's like it empowers women to 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 want to feel good about themselves mm -hmm. to want to get dressed up to support good cause, like I belong to Still City um, Rockabellas, and we raise money for the veterans every year. We pick a, a different charity, but um, we go to car shows and and we get our names out there. People, we just go to car shows, and the old men love it because they're like, "This is an old car. We were in, you know, we were in Vietnam. We were this, and it's just a it really fun to that thing. Time. It really does, yeah. and they're really respectful about it. My boys dress up as greasers. They go with me. Um, we go to events all the time. I hold one in New Alec every year. Um, I unfortunately can't do it this year, but next year I'll be back for it. That's really cool. Yeah. And you did bring your Steel City Rockabella jacket, yeah. which is outside oh, on the railing. Right. Yeah. But yeah. You, know, you brought it as a prop. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who, how did you get into this? Did you hire a photographer? Like, do you work for a certain uh, honestly, organization? Like what? When I lived down in Georgia, right before I found out I was pregnant, um, I had a Facebook page called Mars Operation Group, which was like a military group. We reached out and was like, you should do pinup. I'm like, I've always liked it. My great grandma used to do pinup. My grandma did pinup. My mom does pinup. So it's like the whole family. My great grandfather had a pinup girl on his arm. He was in World War II. Mm -hmm. So it's like something I've always liked. But I was like, okay. So then my friend was dabbling in photography. So we took some pictures, would send them downrange when people were deployed. Um, they would they would use them for bingo. Um, like if they'd win bingo, they'd get a poster that was signed by me. It was like just something fun. Yeah. And then it just turned into more. Like I really enjoyed it. I started learning how to do the hair. started learning how to do the makeup. Um, finding the outfits. Like nothing I really own besides one is really actually vintage. Um, but you meet people and it's it's like a whole little lifestyle. It's really neat. And then when I came back up here, I actually had a bunch of car friends. that were like, hey, I could hook you. Her name's Mandy. I'll hook you up with Mandy. She has a Still City Rockabellas. And then I applied after doing four pinup um, events, and I ended up getting selected to be one. So that's, that, cool. that's where I've been on stage is pinup. So I treat oh. my bodybuilding like pinup, just less clothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, a lot less. Yeah, yeah. That's what makes me self conscious. Like, don't look at my butt. Yeah. But I mean, I'm kind of I'm glad I'm kind of glad you brought up the the lack of clothing with bodybuilding yes. men and women. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Poor guys. <laughs> yeah. Been there, done that. Mm -hmm. Look, bodybuilding is a sport. Mm -hmm. For the bystander, it's not a sport. It's, oh, why would you want to get all tanned up and oiled up and step on stage with no clothes on and flex your muscles? And yeah. You're so egotistical. You're so selfish. You're this, you're that. Actually, it completely is opposite. Completely. <laughs> are. Yeah. That, that's not the thing at all. Mm -hmm. It's hard work. Mm -hmm. It's discipline. It's taking your body to the extremes. Yes. It's testing yourself mentally, physically. Yeah. That's what bodybuilding is. Yeah. And showing off your hard work. Yes, you were showing off your yeah, hard work. Yeah, presenting it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so stop attaching sex to bodybuilding. Yes. Please. Please. Yeah. It's a sport. It, you don't have to like it, but. Or they know. call you freaks because you're too muscular for being a female. Yeah. Yeah. 
I thankfully haven't heard that, but I've heard people like, why would you want to do that to yourself? Why would you want to look like a man? I'm like, uh, maybe if you lifted, you look like a man too, but Boom. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. But, but yeah. yeah, it's, and I do, I think bodybuilding is very artsy. I, I appreciate, like you said, the hard work when we're on stage, we're at our weakest. Like we're not strong by any means. Right. We look strong. And it's, I've actually, like you said, people have said things, but not in, not in a negative way. They're just like, well, how'd you get into that? Like, what? Why would you want to do that? What? What's this? And they edu you get you educate them, and then they're like, oh, okay. Well, that's neat. Mm -hmm. I think just a lot of people are used to like the '80s when yeah. it was a bigger thing too. And then they hear you know steroids, and they hear this, and they hear that. Well, do you take anything? And I'm like, if I did, I'd probably be a lot bigger. <laughs> yeah. And then they look at me and they're like, okay, <laughs> like they don't get it because they they're not part it. of the sport. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they don't understand that. So, and that's people's go-to insults online. They're like oh, continue to take your steroids and looking like a dude, I'm like, I am so thankful you think that I am big enough to be yeah, on steroids. Thanks for the compliment. And then they're like, oh, and I'm like, sorry about your dick size, bro. But it's all right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't, I, I'm, again, I'm a scrapper. That old Brittany is back there somewhere. So <laughs> She just came out. <laughs> just can't get a little ghetto there, but it's all right. <laughs> I love it. Um, what are your future bodybuilding goals? Are you going to, is this going to be part of your lifestyle for a long time? Like, are you hooked? I am. Yeah. <laughs> I am. And then it's very, I'm thankful that Dan, my husband, is very supportive of it because he's been through it. He understands. I couldn't imagine prepping together. That would probably suck. But um, I do, honestly, for right now, that I, do, I would like to. Like next year, I plan on doing, um, you know, Julia's doing like two shows or yeah. three shows, you know. I want to do that. If I'm paying for the pro card or, you know, membership, yeah, might as well do some more sure. shows but I also want to grow. So next year, that is my focus. I want to do maybe like three in a row and really see what I can do. Um, then after that, I don't know. Like, I just want to take it year by year. Yeah. Excuse me. But that's, that's my goal for now. Are you going to do the masters since you're 35? That's, I don't know. I've never, I don't know how the pro thing works. I reached out and I think they just put us all together and then they call yeah. you up as masters. So I'm like, yeah, my, might as well. I, but I don't know how that works. Cause I, I just say turned 35. Yeah, I don't want to say you have an advantage in Masters because there's some 50, 60 year olds oh God, that insanely, are yeah. freaking crazy. I'm pretty sure the one so that won no, last like, year is older than So there's no easy yeah. division at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. I think the, the winner of the physique at Catonsville, mm -hmm. she's like 60 years old. Yeah. She wins the overall every year. She jacked. Well, she probably knows exactly what she needs to do for herself. Yes. Well, the one girl, I believe the one that I'm going to be going to, she she was older. Yeah. She looked amazing. Like her legs were super lean. That's my biggest thing. And my legs don't like to lean out, which I think well, that's a lot of people's issues. Yes. But she looked last. great. Yeah. She looked great. And I'm like, she's older than I am. So, you know, it takes time to build muscle. Also as well, when you get older, you have that density, but then the skin decides it doesn't want to be as taut. Yeah. So, yeah. Getting old probs. So Brittany, when you showed up, our animals greeted you oh, and you loved animals. Yes. Are you, you said you're involved with animal shelters? Or so things? I used to actually volunteer at animal shelters, but our, um, our charity that we picked last year was, um, the vet pets where they help raise money to train dogs locally and give them to the veterans that need them. Um, we raised a bunch of money this last year for them and we had a big gala and they brought some of the service dogs. So that was really cute and fun. Um, but yeah, I love, love animals. Yeah. I've always loved animals. I How actually want to be. I have three Kit Kats and I have a dog and a goldfish. That's my stepdaughter's. But Sushi the goldfish. Sushi the goldfish, yes. <laughs> Sushi so McTartar sauce that. is his full official name. <laughs> Dan added the, the, the tartar sauce to it. Oh and gosh. Alex is like, stop calling him that. <laughs> that is perfect. <laughs> He's one of those circus goldfish. Like he wasn't expected to make it. She's had him they, for over a year. I think year. they last a week. <laughs> She's had him for over a year. Jeez, yeah. bionic goldfish. Yeah, he, he hangs out. Like I said, he's in our bedroom right now because she's studying abroad. So we were just hanging out with them in our bedroom. Sprinkling the creatine in the tank. <laughs> what happened to my fish? Goldfish has pecs. Why is... Okay, Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Um, is there anything that you want to advocate for, Brittany? This is a stage for you um, to talk about things that, you know, are on your mind. Mm -hmm things that you know people are dealing with and struggling with is is there anything you want to like advocate for have a PSA for anything well, when you asked that earlier I literally was racking my brain um, I don't have anything like in particular um, but I would say that you know 
I did deal with depression and I, you know, some mental health things before I lost my daughter and after losing my daughter and never be scared to go talk to someone, family, stranger, you know, counselor, anything like that. Um, know that you are worth it. You are a good person. You deserve good things. Um, and also just try to enjoy life. Try to appreciate even the littlest of things, even the struggles. Try to appreciate those because there's people that aren't alive that would love to just be here. Yeah. Um, which is I working in the medical field. I've really tried to appreciate that because I see how quickly things can change, and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm just happy that I'm I'm healthy. There's these people that really need help, and they're just struggling to survive. And I just I want everybody to know like there's a new day after the you know the sun goes down and just stay here and there's people that love you and you're never alone that's a lot of tough mutter thing you're never alone you're never alone out there yeah ever you're never alone out in the world just sometimes we get antisocial and get depressed and people don't check on each other and we should yeah just because someone looks like they're okay no that's the worst yeah it's usually the people that are more outgoing more giggly that are actually really depressed and upset yeah my guest before you, David, um, oh, yeah. I'll card his episode. He had a friend that overdosed mm. and died. That's and so he was mad because his friend didn't talk to him that he was struggling. Well, he probably felt ashamed. Yeah, probably. Yeah. He wanted help. David mm. said he wanted help. He just could not just crack that code. Yep. Um, but... I want to add one more to your PSA, even though it's not mine. No, you're fine. But don't be negative. Yeah. You used to be. Yeah, oh gosh, I was so crappy. <laughs> what, yeah. What's the point of going through life hating everything and yeah. having a problem with everything and complaining about everything? Mm. I'm on these community pages for my local oh, community. It's the littlest things, too. Good God. Yeah. Get a life. <laughs> like, it's choose everything your Everything is a problem. Mm hmm. They could repave a road, but it's too dark, or they didn't paint the lines fast yeah. enough, or, or the, the lines were painted too quickly. The lines are wavy. <laughs> mm-hmm. The curbs aren't high enough. Oh, I hate that. God. Like, I hate the unsolicited advice too. Like, listen, if I wanted your advice, I would have asked. But yeah, no, like the negativity. I just, I, unfortunately, I think since COVID, it's gotten worse. It, I, I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. I, I work in the restaurant as well, and it's just like, oh gosh, the things that people complain about. I'm like, no stop. one is satisfied anymore. No, I'm telling you, Never. no one is completely satisfied okay. anymore. Everyone has a problem. It's always on to the next thing too. Like, you can't be happy with what they have or thankful for what no. they have. I don't know. I've noticed that a lot too. I hate the entitlement as well. Like, well, I did this. I should get this. No, no, you yeah, need to work for that. What makes you so special? Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, and, th- and thankfully my boys, I'm, I'm really, really trying to, and they're they're very appreciative, and I'm very thankful. People keep giving me, they're 15, good luck with that. I'm like, actually, my kids are yeah. really we're, nice. We're like, yeah. we're cool with each other. They talk yeah. to me about everything, and if not, they talk to, you know, other family members, and they're not entitled. Like, they're very grateful and thankful for the things they have, and I'm, I appreciate that. I, that means I'm doing something well. Yes. <laughs> you know, because if they were little turds, there would be a problem. Um, now they're starting to date. So I'm like, you treat a girl wrong, there's going to be problems with me because I was a single mom for so long. Yeah. And they know not to be rude and stuff. Well, it's so. great that you're instilling those values in yeah. them. Yeah. And this younger generation is in trouble. And I blame social media. Oh, definitely. I feel bad, actually. Right. Because they compare themselves and they want to be this. And I'm like, this person's not even like real. They're not showing the true nature of how they are. You just see pictures or video of them. Yeah. And I think... The younger generation also looks at their friends as probably one of the biggest influences on them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, while so-and-so, they have this and their parents have this and they bought them a car and they, it's like, well, let's see what so-and-so's like debt to income ratio is. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Let's see what so-and-so, like, it's, it's, it's always more than what's on the surface. Exactly. You just see what's in front of you, not behind closed doors. Right. And I feel like the people that are the loudest are the ones that have a lot of issues at home. Yeah. Yeah. My boys, they were telling me there's fights in their school with the girls all the time. I'm like, why? Why? 
Why? Girls suck. Yeah. I'm I, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a, no, I'm a tomboy. So I like, I have girls very few girlfriends. Suck. Yeah. Yeah. Girls are mean. Vicious. Very mean. Um, you could be friends with them one day. Very and catty. Emini, uh, Eminis. <laughs> See a Emini. It's been a long day. Right, Nemo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Another, and enemies another movie. <laughs> that's two three um but anyway like why why do girls suck what is it i why, why the competition and that's the thing i i was never like that towards other girls but i always got hurt by girls that were like that and i think that's why i, I now have girlfriends that like i really do trust and i'm thankful for but back in the day oh my gosh i don't know what it is i don't know if they just want to step on you to get what they want and they're just going to use you i'm not sure but i had a very close used to be my best friend do that to me and i'm like that sucks man it was like a breakup like i i had to get rid of that because everything i was doing she was hindering yeah and it it sucks i don't know i don't know maybe they just see it as competition like you said maybe competition i don't i can, don't know can you imagine a group of guys sitting around being like can you believe george bought those silly shoes like seriously <laughs> Like, I can't. <laughs> Maybe it happens. I don't know. Yeah, you never know. Exactly. Like, just, does he really think he looks good in those <laughs> What the shorts? hell is he wearing? Yeah. Those jorts over there. <laughs> right? Yeah. Is that yeah. a thing? No. Comment below if guys talk about that stuff. <laughs> but there's fairies. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. I, I think it's also who you surround yourself with, right? Sure. Like, the obstacle course racing people were just were such, like, tomboys. Like, I openly talked about... A bodily function yesterday in front of this this couple that was at the second chance prom all my other friends were ocr nothing's off limits and the lady just looks at me and i was like well you're gonna learn a lot about me today because i don't care like it's yeah. just gonna come out and she just starts busting out laughing and i'm like yeah you have to remember not everybody's like you <laughs> like That's we're all okay. human we all got butt cracks right like it's fine <laughs> it's what it is but yeah it's just funny because you find these people that you surround yourself with that are of like mind right you can yeah. talk about anything, but then you have these people that are like, oh my God, how dare you? How dare you talk about farts? I have 15 year old boys. Farts are funny. Sure. You know. Come, farts are funny. Yeah. I don't care how old you are. They <laughs> exactly. are. Exactly. They're funny. But Dan goes, I'm a perpetually 15 year old. I laugh about everything. And I'm like, yeah, yeah you're not wrong. But yeah, so I, I think it's just how you, who you surround yourself with. Yeah. yeah. The older you get, the more you I find it. myself really kind of picking and choosing my social yeah. circle yep. more, that, more now than ever. Smaller. Yeah. Yeah. I don't connect with those who don't have i, I don't want to say you have to be like me yeah but, but you have some similar similar interest. you know values similar yes. you know life goals mm -hmm. as far as like being driven and this and that mm -hmm. if you're a lazy piece of crap we're probably not going to be no. friends no no you like know? i love that Devin joined me last year or she and i i shouldn't say join me she and i signed up and did the debut together because it's just we were in the struggle together, you know, like we know what it's like. And it's good to have that person there to be like, Hey, you know, cardio sucks today. You know, how are you doing? Well, you know, I was thinking the same thing. Okay. Well, it, it's only one day. Let's get through this, yeah. you know? So it was really cool to have her there. And it was really nice. It was, it helped our relationship even more. So it's like you said, you don't want to be around someone that just kind of sits on the couch and does nothing. I don't know. <laughs> I think it would pull you down. It, you yeah. Know, just, Kind of like indirectly. Yep. I had an ex-boyfriend like that that made me just feel like, oh, I don't want to do this. Say, well, I want to. Well, why do you have to go to the gym? Because I want to. And, and made just, you feel like you were doing something wrong because yeah. you did. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, bye, see ya. And then I realized that he started to drink as well. And I was like, that is not not okay with me. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, Brittany, it's time to arm wrestle. Oh, gosh. I told you these aren't functional. That's what we do on this. Little, That's oh, what yeah. we do on this podcast. I heard we arm wrestle. And saw. <laughs> so you were kind of mentally prepared for this. On my cardio days, what am I listening to? The podcast. <laughs> At a girl. Right, I'm gonna put this right here. Now this is just for entertainment. Oh my gosh. No one's slamming anyone. Take a drink of water after. <laughs> you just want to see my body. I'm just kidding. Pop some test boosters before we do this. I think with my ovaries having issues, I think I already have enough testosterone. <laughs> You'd be like, hey, Sean. Hey, how are you today? I have a better beard than you. No, I'm just kidding. Speaking of, my son just started growing a beard, and I said he's in contention with my husband to go. Oh, my beard. gosh. Okay. I don't even know if I'm close enough.
My, We're good. Oh so gosh. I want you to start whenever. What do, what do you? I'm so sweaty. <laughs> you are. What? I get anxious. And I oh my sweat. gosh. You're damp. <laughs> I'm going to say it. You're moist. Moist. I was going to say, oh, I don't like that word. I'm sorry. You're just going to deal with my gross hands. <laughs> You're going to slip right out of this. My feet are so sweaty. What is is going on no foot pictures okay <laughs> all right you all start right. when you're ready i'm, I'm gonna ask <laughs> yeah. you a question while we're doing this so you have to use your brain and your biceps at the I'm same blonde. time i can't do that <laughs> all right go ahead and start when you're ready okay <laughs> if you could say something to your dad right now what would you say um i love you i love that all right that's good <laughs> before we slide up oh your whole chair went not even gonna hit your speaker <laughs> You did good. Sorry, not the speaker, the microphone. I'll get the mop out after I, you leave. I tell, honestly, my that's why I put these on because my feet are so sweaty. I did pole fitness and I used to fall off the pole because I would sweat so much. I would put the stuff on my feet and everything. Oh my god, <laughs> it's overactive sweater. Actually, I used to Is that put a thing? stuff on. Yeah, I used to put stuff under my armpits. It would burn my pores, so I wouldn't sweat as much. Wow, like shirts would be soaked. I'd wear multiple shirts. That's all hormonal, right? I honestly don't know. Is that no, hereditary? Stan has the same thing. Is your like, mom sweaty? I don't know. I've never asked. I just, I'm an anxious person, so I sweat. I, mom, I, are you sweaty? <laughs> Mother, do you have armpit issues? And No, I don't think she is. Okay. I don't think so. I think it's just me. I'm just an anxious person. Just, just you. Yeah. Is, is that what it is? Just yeah. being anxious? Yeah. That and, well, when I get, um, yeah, when I get nervous, like I'll be at work. If I get nervous, my, my feet sweat, my hands sweat. Usually they're cold. Come on, make the reference. When I get nervous, I put my... Thank you. Yes, oh, you get me on. Thankfully, I have nice underarm deodorant on right now, so you can't smell anything, so we're good. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. You can't top that. <laughs> we, we need to have we need to have a, a round two of, of this, and so we could talk about movies mm -hmm. the whole time, um, bodily functions, all the good stuff. Hey, I, I tell my patients, nipples and butt cracks, we all got them. We all got them. Because mm -hmm. they're always like, oh, my God. And I'm like, I'm not looking at you, girlfriend. They might be longer than mine. I'm not looking. We have the same parts. Longer. <laughs> it's, the, it's the bitties. The little bitties. They're like, don't look at me. Yeah. <laughs> well, Brandy, do you have any questions for me before we wrap up? Anything else you want to get off your chest that we didn't talk about? No, I don't think so. I think we covered a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. Yeah. That's yeah. my brain. It goes over everything. Yeah. yeah. We hit the, the major points, I think. Ooh, what's your favorite bourbon? No. I don't know. So I'd say 20% of these haven't even opened yet. So okay. I guess I don't know what I don't know. I'm a huge fan of like the double oaked stuff. Okay. The twice barreled things, the finished bourbons. I was going to say the more like, do you like a smoky type of bourbon? Do you like I, other? I, I like to, um, I, I kind of like a sweeter okay. bourbon. Yeah. So things that have like a, a syrupy maple, vanilla, caramel, like taste to it. I am all for it. My friend made me a caramel um, something. I can't even remember. It was in Ohio. It's really good. And it was bourbon. I took a little sip of it. It was, in, like you said, it was sweeter. Mm -hmm. That was good. So that Woodford Reserve Double Oak that's behind the electrolytes. Oh, yeah. Um, that's the bourbon that started my bourbon okay. collection. Okay. And yeah. bourbon, I don't want to say obsession. That's a horrible word. But that's the bourbon that started it all. That That's better. But that smells and tastes like French toast to me. Oh. Because yeah. I've acquired that you yeah. know, ability to pick out the different things. But. I used to drink tequila, so yeah, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> not not good results, mm, bad decisions. No, just I grew up. Because <laughs> oh. I used to drink it like on the rocks, but then I just, yeah, I can't drink anymore. It physically just gives me a headache. <laughs> so I'll have like a glass of wine maybe once a month. Yeah. Yeah, not anymore on prep. But not on prep. Yeah. yeah. Aubrey, not on prep. Promise. Swear but to yes, you said you're going to come back and you're going to enjoy a little bit of bourbon yes. with me. I'm going to hold you to that. We're going to celebrate. And then we're going to talk about your pro debut and the Tough Mudder that you're doing because you have some big things coming up. Yeah. So I kind of want to hear about those in the mm -hmm. future. Okay. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Thanks for coming yes. on, Brittany. Thank you for having me. This is awesome. Good. I'm glad you liked Thanks. it. Thanks. <laughs> and don't forget to watch one of these episodes. And I will see you on the next episode of Barbells and Bourbon. Peace. <laughs> Flush you. <laughs> ah, wait. There oh you go. Oh, my gosh. I'm moist. <laughs> that's what you get. <laughs> and that's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs>